Now, all this sort of stuff, because it sounds like there was just a lot going on at this point in time. And then, so this is around 2018. That's the year that you officially launched No One Network as that brand? Yeah, in May 2018. Yeah. Okay. And so why did you pick that particular name and what made you officially launch it as a brand? So I think the whole concept with No One was we were kind of people that no one cared about, you know, kind of in the shadows. Um, no one gave a shit about hip hop. No one gave a shit about graffiti culture. No one really cared about this whole underground street culture movement. And that was kind of the beauty of it. We had this network of people. I had this album that I was contributing photos to for a couple of years with this whole movement called The Network. And uh, kind of all just linked up together. You know, we're, we're the no ones, the nobodies, the network of no ones. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. So then this is 2018. And then in 2019, you did an interview with Chazza from the UK? Uh, I don't think so. What I did an interview with him, maybe 2020, I think, in okay. the studio at Green Slopes. Okay, so that was 2020. Yeah. In that interview, you guys discussed like the whole thing about uh, drill and then the violence, the impact that it has. Yeah, so a big thing was doing the NOAA network was kind of trying to focus on positivity and longevity, like focusing on the art. Um, you know, before I met Toby and, and a lot of the things we, we saw around us was um, a lot of toxic sides of the culture. And we also had a lot of the older guys who kind of bridged us into the scene, like really teach us a lot about that, you know. You know, a lot of when they were our age, you know, might not have, you know, had similar outlooks but now that they come through the scene you know a lot of people you know whether it's gone to jail passed away drug addiction like all the toxic sides of hip-hop culture we we're very lucky at a young age to have the older guys kind of you know really back and see what we were doing um, there was a massive focus with nerve music as well and kind of why i linked up with him mm. um you know it was a lot of old crew and stuff that i might have hung out with back in the day and and this was this positive kind of focus on the culture and, and the longevity that, and the art and, you know, kind of, you know, still backing yourself and doing what you want to do and what you love, but not ruining yourself along the way. So then I guess what is, you know, what is your take on, on drill and then the impact that it's having on the community? I think it's important for people to be able to express their story. And um, to be honest, I think the audience is a problem with a lot of things. I think as creators, we're able to listen as an audience and, and take away from those things without it influencing us. But the audience is the one who can take the wrong influence from that music. You know, hip hop's always been about expressing yourself and telling your unique story. And a lot of those unique stories do come from the drill. And the people that you saw kind of contributing to that first were people who had been through things that none of us had been through and experiences that none of us had. You know, and, and expressing themselves was a good way for them to kind of maybe get away from that, you know, or to be on some new paths in life, you know, focusing on the art again. And uh, I, honestly, yeah, I think it's the audience and that's where you can get conflicted as a creator because you think, is what I'm doing contributing and to this toxic culture? Um, does the audience really understand, you know, are they taking this a little bit too, too much? And too much into their own lives or idolizing it to a point that they want to follow those same pathways when a lot of these people who are in these pathways and experiences didn't choose that you know they didn't listen to some gangster music and then decide they want to be a gangster you know, they didn't listen to these things and and you know and i think that's the thing with the drill movement and any movement and any side of that kind of sex drugs and violence is a lot of people certain personalities can gravitate to wanting to chase that lifestyle, you know, when a lot of people didn't choose to be. And, and yeah, so I understand it and I, I can see what it's doing for people. But uh, I think the audience really need to think sometimes. And I think that also goes back to our responsibility as creators, though, to remind the audience. And a lot of the artists I was working with who, you know, were representing different sides of the culture that people like Nerve weren't, did emphasize that a lot and I had lots of conversations with, you know, and that's why you know, looking back at the 201 movement and things like that as well, you know, 
a lot of that was, you know, drug abuse and a certain lifestyle. Um, but I remember, you know, chats with Husky and Husky being like, don't be like me. You know, he, that was a big part of his brand. Um, but again, it comes down to the audience, you know, how they interpret it mm. and how they they go along with it, whether they can listen to the story or whether they can, you know, idolize it and then try to try to be that. Try to emulate, emulate it. Emulate it, yeah. Yeah. Which isn't what makes it big in the first place. You know, there's that it, that blows up because it is a unique perspective that none of us have heard mm. or something where we go, holy shit, like I've never been through any of that, you know. Yeah, nah, no doubt, man. I think people need to acknowledge what they've been through and, and rep that. And we've never, ever tried to rep something that we've never done. And I think that's what's great about a lot of the nerve movement and what we've been doing is it's about the art because we're not out there slinging packs and, and rapping about it. You know, we're not there with a hundred bitches at our house and rapping about it, you know, like girls, women, I should say, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, we're not trying to ever say something that we're not doing. And I think that's what got us a lot of respect from the older heads who have seen that culture and, and how much people try to copy and emulate things that they don't do. Mm. You know, it's about the art. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.